Modern is a Magic the Gathering format introduced in 2011 at Pro Tour Philadelphia. The format set out to allow players to use cards from the 8th edition and onwards, and with an extensive card pool and a huge potential for decks to be brewed, it was destined to be Magic's most popular competitive format. Hello everyone and welcome to the quarterfinals of Pro Tour Philadelphia 2011 with me your host Richard This Hagen top 8 is where competitive modern began. Starting off players around the globe with archetypes and cards that they should be playing with to get into modern. Modern was generally loved by the player base, giving them a format where their cards wouldn't rotate and they could pick up a deck and not have the need to replace it. Counter, wall of roots, dismember the blighted agent, I'm gonna send it. Yep. To my spell sky, and that is enough for 2 0 to Sam Black of the United States. The format was such a hit, it was quickly brought back to Pro Tour Return to Ravnica in 2012, won by Stanislav Sivka with Sunny Side Up. This deck was designed to win with Lotus Bloom, Second Sunrise, and a load of artifacts that draw cards, then killing his opponent with either Grape Shot or Pyrite Spellbomb. The format showed that it had a lot of room to brew and make new decks, and people were still winning with the decks back from Philadelphia. So from this point, it was a format to stay. Despite Modern's great start, things went south in 2016. Any modern player that was around during this time knows how powerful Eldrazi Temple and Eye of Ugin was. It wasn't hard for Wizards to see that changes need to be made when 6 of the 8 top 8 players were on the archetype. This event was a pillar, showing Wizards that it's very easy to break Modern with fair cards from Standard. Eye of Ugin was eventually banned and removed from the format, but what wasn't removed was the scar that Eldrazi Winter left on a lot of players. While Eldrazi Aggro was the deck to play at this event, it was clearly identified by some players that the classic affinity decks that have been played in the past were good against it and managed to make two copies in the top 8. And guess what? Jerry Thompson is at 16. 16? Are, we gonna, are we gonna see a victory via Tezzeret Ultimate? We absolutely I believe so. are. This tournament was the first event to display the power of Planeswalkers and the modern format in general. The decks in this event were so fine tuned that shortly after Luis Salvato won the event with Lantern Control, Wizards decided it was time to unban Bloodbraid Elf and Jace the Mind Sculptor, putting modern into what I like to call the Golden Age. Midrange and Control caught up. Despite this, the meta was still amazingly balanced, allowing players to stick with the archetype that they enjoy. Modern was great. A big draw to the format was that no matter what time you started, 2011 or just currently, many players had cards that fit into the meta decks. And also, it wasn't hard to get into the format because Burn was one of the top decks, making it very cheap for people to play. Not only that, but the cards that Wizards were printing into the format were really nicely slotted into Modern through Standard. Things like Assassin's Trophy and Skewer of the Critics were exactly what Modern needed. New tools to put into decks that didn't cost us an arm and a leg. But that was to quickly change. Before the announcement of Modern Horizons 1, we were even having problems in Modern before War of the Spark, and that's because of Arclight Phoenix. What people thought was a fair and fun card printed through Standard was soon realized to be a big problem, but no one could expect what Wizards were going to print next. The format received two heavy hits in May and June of 2019. War of the Spark came out in May, which released a ton of Planeswalkers that saw a lot of play in the modern format. Then following War of the Spark, Modern Horizons 1 was released in June, giving decks access to so many new rares, shaking up the format. While these new rares would be perceived as a good thing, as a format shakeup is very fun, it's not good for modern as it will cost the average player a lot of money to replace their deck in the format. Following Modern Horizons 1, we saw Mythic Championship 4 in Barcelona. This event had 21% of the field playing Hogak, undoubtedly being the best deck in the format at the time, and was so good Wizards had to emergency ban it almost instantly after the event. Now the problem is, 
Faithless Looting went down alongside Hogek. This hurt a lot of players as Faithless Looting has been around since almost modern's beginning, chipping away at the nostalgia that players have playing the format, and ultimately starting to push people away. Many people got disappointed by the fact that Oko Thief of Crowns Once Upon a Time in Mystic Sanctuary came into Modern from the same set and Mox Opal got banned alongside them. To follow up from this ban we had Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath printed in the format which was quickly banned alongside Mystic Sanctuary and a load of other cards. Then to follow up we had Companions printed into the format, we had Eulurises, Giganthas and Yorions which then the Companion rule had to be changed and this still wasn't good enough for Lurus and Yorion to stay in the modern format, they were still too powerful. Before 2019, Modern was seen as the format where you could buy one deck and not have to worry about anything but small upgrades. However, after this time on many occasions players saw the need to either rebuild or construct new decks as the format was going all over the place on what archetype was on top. Modern was designed to save players money and also reduce the need to own new cards, but with the release of Modern Horizons 2, Wizards changed this to cost players money and constantly need new cards. After the seasons of bans, Wizards released Modern Horizons 2, set out to fix the format and give a chase set for all the format's fans. While Modern Horizons 2 arguably balanced the format, making current tournaments have multiple archetypes in the top 8, it has completely ruined the relationship from modern players once had with Wizards. Many modern players have been pushed out of the format simply because of price. As Wizards focuses on printing chase mythics and powerful new cards, it forces competitive players to pay or lose percentage points against other decks in the metagame. Completely counterintuitive to the reason why Modern was made. It was made so that you could buy a deck, stick with it, and have some cheap upgrades over the course of Modern's life. Not only that, but this sets a tone that you can never be too comfortable with your $1,000 pile of cardboard. With standard power level increasing, and more Modern aim sets to come, I end this video with a question, do you want a Modern Horizons 3? I just want to put at the end of the video here my true opinion on this problem. I do believe that Wizards has a big power creep problem right now and it's specifically coming through standard. I also believe that the community doesn't sympathize enough with people who don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a deck because the way that Magic is going to have bigger tournaments is by the game growing and I believe that decks creeping over a thousand bucks ain't going to help with growth at all. So if you do disagree with me, this is an opinion based video, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's about it, check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it.